Hey everyone! Welcome back to another historical knitting adventure. If you saw my last video, you'll have seen that I got really into knitting a historical Victorian pattern on house slippers. And while I was doing the search for those house slippers, I came across another pattern for a Victorian toilet cushion. So I thought this week I would show you guys my process as I try to knit a Victorian toilet cushion. I think the first thing that I wanted to figure out exactly was what in the world is a toilet cushion? Okay, so let me show you guys. This is the book where I first came across the toilet cushion pattern. It's the new guide to knitting and crochet. I just loved all the details about this book. It was published in 1847, which is why I really wanted to knit from it and also because of the intricate design around each page. But when I actually got to the page of the toilet cushion itself, I could not make heads or tails of this pattern. Maybe one of you guys can actually figure out how to knit this and let me know in the comments or show me, share it with me, something like that. But I could not make the math work out at all. Okay, so it says cast on 36 loops on the first two pins and 48 on the other. So does that mean 36 between the first two or 36 per and then 48 on the other one? So how many stitches do we have here really? And then when you read the rest of them, it says knit two plain rounds, one purl, three plain, six plain, with a thread brought forward, two plain, one purl, one plain, 15 plain. So I start to question like, am I on the three needles knitting in the round? Like, am I trying to make something that's circular? And when I do the math and I try to add it all up and add it together, the math doesn't make any sense. And then also the other question that I have is, why would you say one plane, 15 plane, one plane? Why not just say 17 plane? I don't know, it was really confusing. I tried knitting it myself, but I'm not even gonna show it to you. It was really bad. So I decided to, rather than try to make this pattern work and try to interpret what in the world this was trying to tell me, I would do a little bit more research on what a toilet cushion is exactly. I'm not exactly sure that the image search would give me something appropriate, but it actually turns out that I found a lot of pictures of women basically um, sitting at what we would call today uh, vanity, kind of getting ready, putting on her makeup, getting dressed. I think toilet didn't just mean like I, that's the place where I'm gonna go use the restroom, but it's the place where you get ready. What we might, like I said before, what we might call a vanity today. And after doing a little bit more research, I think I had that theory verified for me because I found this book, it's called um, A Whaling Captain's Daughter, and it was written by a girl between 1868 and 1871. She writes on Friday the 18th, she says, Mama has given me some worsted, as in worsted wool yarn, and I am making a toilet cushion which they explain is a seat pad for a stool or small bench. And I'm like, oh, okay, toilet cushion. Cushion isn't like, they don't mean a toilet cushion, like I'm gonna sit on something a little bit more comfortable while I'm using the restroom, but like a little pillow for a seat that you sit on. And I actually found a reference from the girl on a whale ship homepage to this toilet cushion picture, which is um, either crocheted or knitted, embroidered, decorated, and I thought, all the pictures that I found were so beautiful. Velvet, beaded, toilet cushions, and wool work. So I wanted to find a pattern that I could maybe actually work with rather than try to puzzle through something that I didn't really understand at all. I ended up finding this book called A Knitting Book of Counterpanes, Toilet Covers, Pin Cushions, and other articles of fancy work. This was written in 1871, which is why I thought it was really fun that the girl on a whaling book diary entries were between 1868 and 1871 because she was literally knitting this when this book came out. So if she was on a ship, so maybe she didn't get the book, but it's feasible that people around that time were using this exact book to knit their toilet covers or their toilet cushions. Once again, it's another book with just beautiful decorations and scripts. And I followed, I decided to choose a few different patterns to put together my pillow. I chose this raised leaf pattern. It's the square you can see there. So from the instructions, from what I can tell, I have to knit four of them and then stitch them together. I decided that the back 
I didn't want to use the raised leaf pattern as well. I wanted to try out a different one. It's this honeycomb pattern is what I decided to use on the back. And then from what I could see on the reference photo from the girl on the whaling ship's toilet cushion, every one of them has an edge. And this book as well has an edge section. And I particularly liked the scallop shell one, or sorry, it's cockle shell pattern. These are the three patterns that I decided to do. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to sit down and try to translate a lot of this because it's written in Victorian British knitting notation, but P is not pearl in this, by the way. P is plain. And I tried to knit up a little bit of this as samples and I got that mixed up right and left. So I'm gonna have to take a ton of notes and translate it basically to the knitting terms that I'm used to. Uh, so I don't keep on messing up the patterns. And I actually think that I'm gonna drop some charts and things like that. I tried to start it a, li a little bit already on the, on the honeycomb chart, and I think I noticed a mistake in what she wrote here. Um, I'm gonna put this pattern on Ravelry as well, like the original link to the book, and then because I'm planning on taking extensive notes and translating it and fixing that one mistake that I saw in the pattern that's written here, um, you can also buy that for me. It's not gonna be really expensive. Minimal price that it just takes me to write all of this up and illustrate it properly and really think through the patterns and make sure that it's written down in the right way and in a visible way. But if you don't wanna pay for it, that's fine. I will also have the link to the free pattern and you guys can decipher it like I did. So here we go. I am going to try to knit this Victorian toilet cushion. The yarn I decided to use was Karen's Simply Soft. It is a 100% acrylic yarn, and I use the colorway called Persimmon, which is just this beautiful orangey pink color. I really like using circular needles because it makes it harder for me to lose the set. I would guess that these are about 3.5 millimeters in thickness. Okay, so now the first set of instructions is to cast on one stitch. I just use a slip knot, and then it says to um, increase by one by doing a yarn over at the beginning of each row and then knit into the next stitch. So here you can see now I have two. So this pattern is kind of unique because uh, you knit from corner to corner on this square. This is honestly the first time I've ever done this. You can see here now I'm up to three stitches where I've increased by doing a yarn over at the start of each row. If you keep going like that for a few more rows, increasing at the beginning of each one, You'll start ending up with the bottom corner of your piece that you can see here with the leaf starting to become a little bit more defined. Here I wanted to go into a little more detail on how each row is formed. So this is the right side of the work. You can see here that I began the row with a yarn over. So this is the increase in order to make that triangular shape. And because this is the right side of the work, for this portion we're just going to knit all the way across. To the right and left of the leaf pattern, it's a garter stitch, which means that you always knit no matter if you're on the right or the wrong side of the work. Now we're into the leaf portion, and you knit all the way up until you come to like the spine part of it. You yarn over, you knit for the middle of the leaf, and you yarn over one more time. That gives it that little spine or kind of middle of the leaf look there. And then you just keep on going, knitting right across the rest of the work. And remember, you only increase at the beginning of each row, so here you just keep on working until you get to the absolute end of the piece and you can see how the um, 3D effect is starting with the leaf being raised a little bit above the garter stitch to the right and to the left. Now for this portion, the back of the row is slightly different. You still yarn over and in the first part you knit until you hit the leaf because this is the garter stitch portion. But once you get to the leaf right here, you switch to purl because you want the leaf to be in the plain um, knitting. So you don't want it to be garter stitch, you want it to be plain. And here we get to the yarn overs, and you're just going to purl straight into the yarn overs and keep going. So we're not doing any kind of um, lace work or anything like that on the back side of the work. The only thing to remember is to increase at the beginning of the row, knit for the garter sections at the front part of the row and the back part of the row, and switch to purl over the course of when you're going across the leaf. I can't tell you how many times I had to go back and rework some sections because I accidentally forgot to switch to purling on the wrong side of the work where the leaf was. And here you can see the raised leaf pattern where the yarn overs both in the middle of the work and the beginning of the row is causing this kind of 
raising 3D effect as well as it becoming a triangle because we're looking again from corner to corner. Now on this day I knit way past the, when the light was actually good enough to see anything very well but I had just gotten these beautiful lights and I just thought that it looked really nice knitting uh, up against the fairy light. So here you can see some very beautiful uh, filming work of the leaf pattern up against some twinkling fairy lights. It's very, very beautiful. The next day was another beautiful spring morning and I thought it was the perfect time to make myself a really nice cup of green tea. I have a lot of beautiful tea sets that I've collected from the places that I've traveled to and I don't nearly use them enough. So today I decided that I'd use a teacup from my visit to Japan. This was bought in Tokyo and I thought it was just a really, really beautiful blue cup with silver accents. So since the springtime has been such a beautiful season and I have a lovely blooming tree right outside of my porch, I decided to start knitting out there. The only thing is, is I think I'm a little bit allergic to it. Gesundheit! So today, I'm actually going to be getting to the portion of the knitting where my leaf has gotten to its widest point, so now I have to start decreasing and make the leaf come to a point. So here. Once you knit across on the right side of the work, you're going to decrease at the beginning portion of every leaf. You're going to knit straight across, no more yarn overs here in the middle towards the spine or the back one of the leaf. And then you're also going to knit two together at the last half of where the leaf uh, outline is. You can see that I'm slipping the two stitches off of my needle. And this is in order to make the stitches slope in towards each other on both sides of the leaves when you do the knit two together because you don't want them slanting um, both one way towards the left. You want the stitches to be leaning in towards each other. And then for the rest of the row you just knit straight across and at this point you're still yarning over at the beginning of each row because you're still increasing the size of your piece. You just want to have your leaves come to a point. So here you can see the decreases both on the right and the left side of the leaf outline. And uh, this is the wrong side of the work. And on the wrong side of the work, when you're doing these decreases, all you have to remember to do is to uh, do a yarn over at the beginning and switch to purling for the leaf section. So here you can see that the leaf has now come to a lovely point. It's got a beautiful raised 3D effect, which I, I really find looks outstanding against the garter stitch to the right and left. It gives it an extra dimension um, I'm actually also at the widest point of my square now, so from here on out, I'm going to start uh, decreasing my work. And of course, I always work with my dog Nutella close to me. Um, one thing, unfortunately, when I was looking through this, is I don't know what happened to the footage showing me working on the second half of one of these squares, but you can see the photo that I took of the finished piece here. And the second half of it, you decrease at the beginning of each row to match the um, increases, and I just switched off uh, two rows of plain knitting with two rows of garter stitch. And then from that, once you get to the corner, you knit three more. So you have four squares in total, which you then eventually knit together into one piece like this. Now, as I said before, um, on the back of the cushion, I've decided to use the honeycomb pattern. And for that, uh, I need to cast on 54 stitches. I decided just to use the simple long tail method cast on with a uh, slip knot in the beginning. Um, I didn't think that I would need a ton of stretch. Um, I think maybe next time I would use a stretchier cast on. Um, and I also uh, was kind of worried that maybe I'd also need four panels of honeycomb, but I believe that these patterns were written so that you need one of these honeycomb panels for four of the leaf panels. This piece had a lot of new elements for me. For example, the pattern um, that you see forming here where on the right side of the work, you purl one and then you slip one purl and on the wrong side, you just knit all the way across, which you see what I'm doing here. You also see that I finished setting up the bottom 
setup portion for the honeycomb stitches right here. And um, this is how that honeycomb actually takes shape. So um, for this first honeycomb uh, section or piece, I guess you could say, the right two stitches are taken off onto a cable needle and then you knit across and then the left two are taken off as well. I have two cable needles that I'm using here that are slightly different sizes. I think it would have been helpful if I had all of them in that green cable needle size because the um, red one is a bit thicker and a little bit harder to actually uh, get the stitches on the piece. But they worked well enough because you actually have to work across quite a few times. Uh, the instructions recommended that you use spare needles but all the spare needles I had were a little bit too thin and were really prone to slipping because you have to knit like six rows from here on out. Okay, so now I've gotten to the point where I've knitted those six rows and I'm actually going to work the stitches that are on the cable needles now. So you can see that I'm taking them off of the cable needles and it's really pulling the fabric up. And at this point, um, you actually just purl them off and you keep working across um, the work until you get to the next cable needle and you work those stitches off of that one as well. So now um, for each of the future honeycomb uh, sections that I create, because I'm gonna be increasing in honeycomb sections until I get to five sections in the middle, um, you need to take off the borders of each one of those. So I have a few more cable needles, but I don't know if they'll be quite enough for what I'm trying to do. Okay, so you can see what it looks like after I've taken the uh, needles off the cable. So it kind of scrunches up the fabric and creates like a dimple where the honeycomb pattern sits. And now I'm on to the second row of the honeycomb pattern and you can see that I'm attempting to use one cable needle because I like the thickness of this one best to hold all of those edge pieces in place while I knit the six rows up until I have to work them off next. However, sadly, and this will not be the last time, I noticed a bit of a mistake here. You can see that there's only like one ridge stitch here between the indentations of the actual honeycomb areas, whereas I actually need like two ridges of the garter stitch pattern. So as painful as it is, I have to take my needle out and rip this piece back and rework that section and let me tell you, I didn't film it because it just, it got too frustrating. I can't tell you how many times I went back and I had to rework portions of this. Uh, but it's definitely a learning experience in both concentration and technique. Um, but I did eventually uh, work all the way back to the original starting point. Here you can see I re-picked up all the stitches. I didn't lose my place or anything like that. I really should have used a lifeline. That was a bit dangerous when I did. But there you go, that's what it's supposed to look like with more of the um, edged border between the honeycomb pieces. I was considering not ripping back and just continuing, but I am actually really glad that I did it now because not only does it look really defined, but the dimensions are also appropriate for the square. That would have really, it's not much, but with the amount of mistakes that I did, it really would have thrown it off. Okay, so this is a while later, you can tell it's a few days later. Um, and I'm actually halfway done with the honeycomb pattern. I think it's starting to look really cool. Honestly, I have never worked on anything that looks remotely similar to this. Both of the patterns have a lot of 3D texture, which I absolutely love. Um, but when I got to this part, one of the things that I realized is in the future, maybe I need more cable needles. I even had to went, go to my thickest cable needle, which uh, is a bit of a struggle to work with for um, yarn this size, but I am finished. This is the finished honeycomb piece and I really like how it turned out and I am really pleased with how many times I went back and worked on it. Here you can see that I've stitched the four leaf panels together. I love how it looks with them all together at the center. I tried a few different configurations, but I ended up with the suggestion that they had. And you can see that I've also already sewn the back honeycomb panel together. Here I've sewn all the corners together except for one little slot and into that slot or opening I guess I stuffed some pillow stuffing inside and you can see that it really puffed up so um, it's a bit flatter on the honeycomb side and then on the flower side it really puffs up and I kind of love that effect. You can tell that my gauge is a little bit off 
on the leaf panels, but I really like how soft and fluffy and just really fun this pillow looks overall. Or sorry, toilet cushion. So the last thing that I thought would really finish off this toilet cushion nicely is getting giving it that uh, knit border edge. And I decided to go with this um, scalloped shell edge, I believe it's called. Again, completely new technique for me. I have never knit um, lace in like row form before where you're building it up lengthwise like this. Another one of those where I just had to keep on going back and redoing um, certain sections over and over and over again until I got it right. But after a while, it started to become second nature. And I really started to enjoy um, going through this pattern. And I, I really, I've never seen a lace pattern like this. I also haven't done a lot of lace, which is probably why. But I really liked how the different sections looked. In the end, I think when I held it up to the pillow, it was a bit wide, so I might have modified it to make it a little bit shorter. But um, I do really like the contrast of the white against the persimmon color of the pillow that I ended up with, which you can see here. So um, I decided to do four of the scallops per pillow side, and that's how many um, like lace repeats that I did of the pattern. Here you can see that I'm just uh, finishing it off, pulling tight the last loop. I can't tell you how long it took me to finish this edging. It felt really good to finish it. Um, and I'm just holding it up here just to see um, how best it would fit. What I didn't really understand is how do I not get the stretching to be strange around the corners? Like I wanted the pattern to still stand out nicely of the lace and not fold up, but also not be bunched up around the tip of the corner. I decided to just go for it, just kind of wing it and see how it ended up. And uh, yeah, this is the start of another um, pretty tedious part. I honestly didn't think that a toilet cushion would take quite this much of my time, um, but there was a lot of new techniques that I learned and I really wanted to make sure that when I sewed this lace edging on, it um, created like a lovely finished look on my piece. And there it is, my toilet cushion, knit after a pattern, published in 1871. I'm incredibly proud with how it turned out, to be honest. Um, I will post a link down below to the Ravelry project, so uh, you can go look at the original pattern if you want to do it yourself. I also took extensive notes to translate the pattern from um, the original uh, notation style to an actual lace charts for each of the ones that I used. Um, so you are also welcome to buy that. However, if you would rather do the free version and knit off of exactly the same thing that I did, the free version is there and available for you as well. Um, overall, this is an incredibly fun project. Thank you so much for watching. I really had a good time this week and uh, I think I know who's the actual owner of this toilet cushion will be. I think that'll be my dog Nutella. She carries it around with her to the new places that she's going to go lay down and she rests on it, which I think is really cute. Um, anyway, I think I found a new passion for knitting some Victorian historical patterns. So if you liked what I did this week, feel free to subscribe, maybe leave me a comment, and I will see you again next week.